Hello there, Gunpla fans of YouTube. It's time for another Gunpla review, unscripted. And today I'm taking a look at probably the most popular, or at least one of the most popular kits of 2021. That is the real grade Ainu Gundam. This kit came out in September of 2021, so it's still extremely new and a very hot item. It retails for the price of 4,500 yen, which is probably going to be around $50 or so in the US. So, if you can get one of these, good luck. But you will have fun and you will certainly enjoy it here. So, there's a lot to cover here, so let's just uh, get to it here. So, we're going to start with a photo gallery box art. The box for this kit is actually pretty big, it's the same size roughly as the real great Sazabi box, so it's about the same size as that. Uh, side box and a very nice CG representation of the real great Hainu. Side box here we have some information. Uh, the funnels are very similar to the ones in the real grade New Gundam. You use the same advanced MS joint, flex joint for the funnels as where as well as a few parts are reused for that. You can already kind of see right here they're showing off the incredible articulation of this kit here, which is something I really do want to emphasize as we kind of get into the rest of this review here. Uh, there's a lot of moving gimmicks and stuff and all over this kit, so this kit hits a lot of check marks if you're interested in gunplo here. So there's some uh, action shot poses here of the kit here, and as well as some of the accessories and gimmicks here. So. Here's what you get when you open, a open up the box. You get a box chock full of runners here, quite a lot. And let's look at the manual here. I will kind of run through this real quick here because I do kind of want to get to the more important stuff here. But the manual here, construction of the kit is very much like an advanced master grade kit. And kind of if ever built like a really good master grade with a good inner frame and stuff, this kit is very much like that. And if you're a fan of inner frames and detailed inner frames, this kit will hit that check mark for you here. So it does use some silver plastic parts and they're kind of intermixed kind of throughout. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what they did with the Master Grade Alex 2.0 a little bit in a way that they kind of have like a silver frame parts over a few parts, mainly in the skirt armor. And there's a few exterior silver parts here. But like, like I said, nursing the kit's pretty straightforward. There's really nothing too complicated about it. If you built any real grade in the past few years, it's very similar. Um, just kind of pay attention. There are a few tiny parts, especially some tiny silver parts and tiny gray parts, so I do make sure not to uh, lose those or cut those improperly with your nippers. But, uh, backpack is actually pretty big. For this kit so again if you're into big backpacks on your gunpla this hits another check mark for you so, <laughs> so here's just showing off the accessories the shield shield construction um this kit styling is very much more reminiscent of the the original master grade high new gun which i did review earlier on my channel it kind of takes a few elements from the original high new gun the, the verka version and as well as kind of mixes it all together and then it kind of I feel like they kind of seedified the high new Gundam a little bit here like they gave it kind of a makeover look very similar to what was done to the Freedom Gundam for the Freedom Gundam 2.0 Master Grade so that's kind of the impression I'm kind of I, I have with this kit so far after building it and taking a good look at it and all the posing and everything so also, this kit does have an open hatch gimmick here, so if you're into that sort of thing, again, it's another check mark. You don't see that too often on a 1144th kit or a real grade, so Bandai got that in here too somehow. <laughs> uh, sticker markings, there's actually quite a bit of sticker markings for this kit, but they don't feel like they overcrowd the kit too much, so feel free to use them. And here are those sticker markings here. It's not especially big sheet, but it does seem like there's a lot here, but you kind of go through it pretty quick as you're, as you're applying them. I'm going to check something in the runners here. I can't seem to zoom here for some reason on my 
photos here, but whatever. Uh, runners here. So, A runner is our typical multicolor runner here. We got uh, white. This is a white white. It's not really a off white color here. As well as this sort of a. It's got, they, they describe it as a pale purple color, but it looks kind of like a lilac color almost. And there's a little bit of clear here, and you got this gold color here, which is kind of an orangey gold. I'm not quite sure how easy it would be to match this in paint because it's not really like a standard gold color. But they describe it kind of in the manual as using gold and then using some clear orange to probably get that effect. So if you're looking to match that color, that's probably your best bet. And here we have our advanced MS Joint 15. This is the same runner from the Real Great New Gundam. It's pretty much just for the funnels. Uh, runner C1, this is our first uh, pretty much all white runner. This has your fuel tanks, parts of the bazooka, parts of the arms, legs, and funnels, and other white parts around the kit. You get your two beam sabers on here too as well. And C2 is basically a partial duplicate. This minus the parts for the bazooka and the extra beam saber. D is another white runner. Does that parts for the skirt armor, bazooka, beam rifle, uh, backpack, looks like a torso, backpack, yeah, waist area. E runner, this is a duplicate from the real grade new Gundam. That basically just has parts for the funnels. The only parts you use are these large, these large inside pieces and the backing pieces, these ones here. Uh, these little outside pieces are not used. There's a different ones that are used on this kit. Uh, F runner here. This is our first uh, gray runner. It's basically a standard Gundam, Gundam gray color. So this is inner frame. You got parts for the legs and parts for the backpack in here as well as arms. And it's all pretty well organized on the runner too. So all the leg parts are together in one part. All the arm parts are in one section and all the backpacks are kind of in one section here. So it's pretty easy to use. And yeah, another F runner. Uh, G runner. Uh, this has parts for the beam rifle, shield, uh, other parts of the arms, the torso, the skirt armor, and some parts of the backpack, and as well as the hands and your action base adapter. H1 is our first blue color. This is kind of like a sky blue color. Uh, we have parts for the shield, backpack, legs, the thin funnels here. And we have a H2, which is a partial duplicate, but it also has parts for the torso and some parts for the arms on here as well as the head parts here. I1 is our first silver plastic runner. These are not silver plated or painted. These are, this is just straight up silver plastic. So it looks nice, but the thing about silver plastic you gotta keep in mind is if you try, once you, once you clip the nubs off, you will be left with kind of a black mark where the nub was. And the only way to hide that is to actually use some silver paint and basically you're just gonna have to paint over that in order to hide it. There's really no no way to get around that. So no matter how good good you are at cutting nubs, you are going to have a mark on these things. So just remember that uh, that um, some of these parts are undergated so you won't see it, but there are some that you will end up seeing the black marks on on the finished kit no matter what you do. So you will have, to, like I said, you will have to kind of get some silver paint and just kind of paint those. Uh, second silver plastic one of the parts for the bazooka and some more parts for the legs and vents kind of throughout the kit. These little tiny silver vent pieces, you know, these are some of the tiny parts I kind of mentioned earlier. You want to keep keep a tab on these and not lose them because they are very tiny. As well as they've got this little tiny silver toe part as well. And SB-13, our standard beam saber runner for this kit. It is in a nice blue color. It's nice to have a different beam saber color every now and then, as opposed to, you know, red and green gets kind of boring, and yellow gets boring too, so it's nice to have something different. So, a bright blue color, I'm down with that. I do kind of wish we had an extra beam saber runner, because there are three beam sabers on the kit. And I like the other, I like the Master Grade uh, High New Gundam. This one doesn't have a double-sided beam saber, so there's only, like, standard beam sabers on this kit. I don't remember what kind of beam savers come on the uh, Vercaw kit. It, it might be standard ones, but I guess I was a little disappointed to get a dub, the, dub, the double sided beam savers here, but whatever. Uh, here's some additional photos during construction here when I was painting. I just want to point out this F runner here. This is a very big plot plate runner here. <laughs>
this is probably the biggest runner sheet I've seen on a real great kit. So it's it 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 will only fit in the box one way because it's so long. So it has to go in lengthwise. You can't put it in like sideways. It just won't fit. So again, it's just something interesting about this kit is that the runner the, there's runners that are so big on this thing here. So. <laughs> So here's some construction. This is uh, the inner mechanism inside the knee joint of the leg. Just kind of want to show that off here during construction. And here's that kind of movable vent that's on the backpack where the uh, fin funnel rack is. So this little thruster kind of moves along with the back uh, fin funnel holder. You can kind of see it right in action right there. And during construction, I did put a little bit of extra effort into this because that's why it took so long when I was working on it. I did a lot of painting detail on the inner frame as well as panel lining everything like I do because I'm insane sometimes with this stuff so. <laughs> so as you can see here I did try to emulate the look of um, Psycho Frame in a few areas of the kit here uh, by using um, silver paint as paint, silver paint and painting over it with a metallic green uh, Gundam marker which I think emulated the look of the green Psycho Frame pretty well. And it kind of did that kind of in spots throughout the uh, inner frame, as you can see here. The only problem is, is my metallic green marker kind of started to run out towards the end. So <laughs> I was having a hard time getting paint out of it. So I had to start scooping paint out of the marker to kind of just apply it manually. And it got a little messy and didn't look quite as good as it did before. So, But I cleaned it up and made it look as, made it look as good as I could. So. Anyway, here's a look at the completed inner frame of the kit. It's actually a pretty nice looking inner frame. So like I mentioned, if you're into inner frames on kits, this kit kind of checks the, checks the box for that. So, so I do have the skirt armor pieces on here. But, excuse me, but you don't, you don't have to have those on there. Here it is with the backpack on it. The backpack has some inner frame in it as well. So I have it up on an action base here, just to kind of help with the balance here. I'll talk about the action base thing later here, but let's kind of want to get through this here. So here's the back shot of the inner frame of the backpack here again. It's a pretty nice uh, level of detail on the inside of this here. Here I am showing up the leg bend and a little bit of the articulation of the kit here. There's a bit of the arm articulation. Uh, the arms do kind of, they have to kind of, they're, they're in this design that's pretty typical of a lot of kits nowadays where you have to kind of slide the arm out and then forward and then up or down. And then it kind of slides back in to kind of make it all look together again, so. And here is the completed kit all put together looking nice and standing as best as it can. Like I mentioned, this kit has a big backpack so it is quite back heavy, so. <laughs> It will have to kind of rest on those those really long fuel tanks, uh, fuel booster tanks that are kind of hanging off the backpack, so it's just the only way it's going to stand up. There's a close-up shot of the uh, front, as well as the back shot here. You can see it's kind of resting on those two booster tanks on the back. There's a side shot of the shield here, another profile shot here, close-up. Alright, so for the articulation test here, I have pretty much had to remove the backpack because the backpack's so big and it just kind of gets in the way and it can't, it has a hard time standing up on its own with the backpack, so I'm just going to say that this is one of those kits that I think pretty much is required to have an action base for, otherwise you're kind of limited in what you can do with it, which is a shame because this kit has some incredible level of articulation here. Here's a back shot here, but anyway. Articulation, just to kind of show you in pictures here some of the things that this kit can do to an extreme in, in some cases. So, kind of a hunched over pose here with the, the waist section completely tilted forward as far as it can. Here is the knee bend pose, it does this quite well. Thanks to the ability of the side skirt to kind of just swing out of the way completely. And I hope this is a feature of that band I will incorporate into future kits here because this is super handy to have. Because the side skirt is just on its own 
its own unit and it just swings out of the way completely. And I'll demonstrate that when I get to the live view here. In addition, this leg can bend up extremely far up in the completed kit form. I can swing it so far up that I can actually t have the knee touch the torso without having to bend the torso forward or anything. Like, that's something I really don't see on... I really haven't seen that, on, seen that on a kit before that can actually do that when it's fully completed. I know you can get away with it in like the bare inner frame form on a lot of kits, but on the completed kit, I haven't seen that before, so... Wow. And here it's just kind of doing kind of like the straight splits here, just to kind of show you here, but... I also kind of want to show you this here because this kit can touch both of its feet stretched out <laughs> with its hands <laughs> like some gymnast so like I said there's a lot of um it's a lot of articulation in this kit to the extreme in a few cases here also if you like big uh back skirts on kits uh, this also checks that mark off for you too as well now the cockpit has two ways of opening, you have the standard slide open door on the front as well as the entire section can kind of move forward and lift up out of the way and actually does this very easily unlike some other kits which I have a lot of trouble with sometimes but this one does it right in my opinion. So here's that open hatch gimmick, I tried to open up as much stuff on this kit as I possibly could and there's quite a number, most of the open hatches are on the legs and the shoulders but everything else I kind of opened up anyway, just to kind of give you the impression of everything is opening up on this kit here. And you kind of see also where the side skirts just kind of move completely out of the way of the legs. So we do have open hatches on the shoulders, the beam saber hatch on the uh, left arm here. And all these open hatches on the legs and hatches on the back skirt armor come up, open up and as well here. So here's a close-up close up of the leg hatches. You got... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's about six hatches on each leg that open up to reveal a little bit more of the inner detail of the, the inner detail of the leg here. Thankfully, I can show up a little bit of the inner psycho frame I painted in uh, through this here, so it's kind of nice to have this feature. This is a video if it will if it will play, maybe no. Oh well, I got a video here, just a rotating video of the open hatch gimmick. It doesn't want to play for whatever reason. Um, try again. Nope, oh, okay. It won't play in the preview. But you, you but the gallery's in the in the uh, information below, so you can check it out on your own if you want to. Uh, the beam rifle can be attached to the back of the skirt armor. Uh, the same way as the real grade new Gundam, it's the same same system. Alright, so action base. Uh, you get this little action base adapter here. It's actually, well, well not a little one, it's actually a unique proprietary action base connector for this kit. Now, wh now what you do need, need is, well, you obviously need your action base, but you do need to use specifically the peg adapter that I have here pictured in order to attach the adapter to it. It won't attach to the hexagonal plug on its own so you got to have that on there so make sure you have that piece don't if you have your action base of action basis you should keep your extra bits don't don't throw those away because you will need them <laughs> for a situation like this anyway uh the adapter kind of plugs into the back of the torso you have to have the backpack off and then you put the backpack on this kind of sits on top of it and just sandwiches together and it's very secure once it's on there so here is the real great new Gundam up on the action base, which is probably where it should be because now you can really start to show it off here. But before we do more, let's talk about articulation of the backpack here. So here's how far the funnels will swing up out of the way and how far down they will swing. Uh, the funnel racks will swing straight back if you need them to. And this little uh, thruster binder uh, that's in the middle, it comes I was thinking of, thinking of what to call it for a moment here. Uh, thruster bar can kind of move up and down. It can stick straight up here. It, this little hatch can open up and the thruster bar can kind of slide together to shorten it and it can kind of just stay fixed in a straight out pose like this here. 
So we have a pose of the kit in action with the beam rifle, shield, and everything that's ready to go into action here. Uh, another shot of that. On the backpack here, it has had this little um, clip that'll open up in the backpack. This is for attaching the hyper bazooka to the back. And it will just kind of clip right in there and just stay put, even with the action base adapter on there. I always like it when you can attach everything to keep all the equipment on the, on the Gundam. I always like that. So we can we can do that here. So that's another, another checkbox this kit meets. So, so another action shot pose here. Uh, here's the machine cannon on the right forearm. It is articulated a little bit here, so it kind of extends in and out. And that is uh, controlled by the wrist joint here. As the joint moves down, it'll actually extend the barrel out just a little bit. Here it is with the hyper bazooka. I'll try doing a two-handed pose here. It poses okay. It's still a little awkward to pose with, but you know that's kind of the case with most bazooka weapons. I think the Gundam looks better with the beam rifle, just my opinion, but whatever. Uh, the beam sabers are stored in the funnel binders on the back here. Here they have kind of a little hatch that kind of opens up on the back and lifts up. Get your blue beam saber blades with that and they look really cool. Get some little action posing with that here. Uh, the holding hands have a little have a little joint in them so you can actually have the blade stick straight out from the arm if you want to. Very nice. Here's some more action posing with the beam sabers. And the extra beam sabers in the left forearm, this kind of opens up like that. There's no mechanism in this here to have the saber stick out or anything. It's just kind of, it's just held in there. So you just have to pop it, just have to pop it out. And it just uses the same blades as the regular beam saber. So like I said, if you have all three sabers out here, you only have two blades. You can only have two of them active at, at, at once anyway, so. That's why I kind of mentioned it would be nice to have extra beam saber blades, but I guess Bandai didn't feel like providing those. And here it is of all six funnels out. Um, this is a kit that would be nice to have um, effect parts for and some kind of funnel system to kind of hold the funnels up and action poses. I know there is a separate kit, uh, P Bandai kit, I believe it has that. So. Uh, this kit actually might be worth having that for, just a suggestion, so if you do see that, you might want to start getting that. Otherwise, the funnels are just, they just kind of lay there. And here it is in a size comparison next to the, <coughs> excuse me, next to the regular RX-78-2 Gundam, the real grade, as well as the real grade new Gundam, just kind of see a comparison. Now, people have mentioned that this kit is actually bigger than what it should be. Uh, from what I understand, the High New Gundam is supposed to be smaller than the than the uh, standard New Gundam. The standard New Gundam was just sized up basically for the film, from what I understand. While the while the original the original New Gundam was the High New Gundam, and that was kind of more the size of a closer to the size of a standard standard mobile suit. So, but. You know, personally, I like having it this size. I think it looks pretty good, sized up a little bit here, like so. I'm not complaining. I think it looks good. And here are, is all the accessories. You got your six funnels, the shield, hyper bazooka, beam rifle, your two standard beam sabers, your spare beam saber, action base adapter, trigger hand for the beam rifle. You get two holding hands for the sabers and the bazooka two fist hands and two open hands so that is what it comes with no tiny Amaro figure with this kit by the way what you see is what you get so anyway let's switch over to live view now give me just a moment Time to moisturize my throat because we got more to talk about here. Anyway, here is my real grade high new Gundam. But what I basically want to show off here is basically more the articulation that I couldn't really show up in the photos here. 
these two tanks here are kind of on ball joints so they'll move around you can pose them it's not the strongest ball joint they will kind of they will kind of fall down a little bit here uh, the binder here like I mentioned you can move up and down like so this hatch here slide in like that to kind of keep it in place if you want to have it like that there's that little bazooka hatch is right here now these funnel racks they can move up and down like so pretty decent range of articulations pretty good joints where it's not going to slip or fall uh, here's the movable moving thruster is on this binder here these will just kind of move around a little bit like so and it's basically just a friction joint that holds these in so there's not really any clip or anything it's just friction so if you are painting the kit this is something to kind of keep in mind so if there's paint on paint on here and inside the joint it's going to be like super tight and probably scrape the paint so just kind of keep that in mind you might have to do some modification here or just or just make a decision to keep the funnels in here all the time so i'm gonna go ahead and take this off because that'll be easier for me here because this backpack is pretty big hmm. the other thing i want to mention here is the beam saber holders here i actually have the beam sabers out right here because i'm, I'm just going to leave these out because it's kind of hard for me to open these up but these have to kind of, you have to kind of pull these forward and up. And it's kind of hard to get your finger in here. You have to kind of pull it up and then out like that. So it's not the easiest thing to uh, grab with your fingernails, but especially when it's on, when it's all, all together here. So but yeah, but yeah, that's the backpack. It's pretty, like I said, it's pretty sizable backpack here. Funnels here, like uh, if you built the real great new gun, it's the same exact thing here. So it just kind of all go together like so, like that. So nothing complicated. Uh, the way these are configured, you, you're not, you, you can't swap these with the ones on. You can't swap these onto the real great new gun because they don't have the latches on the side to hook into. So. If you were wondering, I know there's probably some people who probably wonder about that sort of thing, so, but, anyway, I'm going to set this aside here. Let's talk about the core Gundam itself here, a little close-up look here. So the head, the head can look back uh, pretty decently here, not that far back. There's probably one, two, three joints in here to actually move the neck back. And go all the way back here. This little collar piece will come up a little bit like so. There's a little movable collar back here, back collar here. It doesn't move a whole lot, just a little bit, but I guess any amount helps. Uh, side to side, not quite the same story. As much as I like the look of the um, High New Gundam's head design, these really long side collar pieces do get caught on the side of the torso all the time, and they will kind of restrict the uh, head from being able to look to the side. You know, like that, I think it was in what, The Dark Knight, Batman complained that, I'd like to be able to turn my head. Can't turn my head all the way. Because they got stuff in the way, but it's the same problem. Uh, let's see, a cockpit hatch here. I'll probably just show it off here real quick. It's really, really easy to open. Like that. And the hatch. Pops open like so. So, so, so the arms. In order to really articulate them, you gotta pull them out a little bit here. And then you can pull them up all the way like so, if you want. So, pretty decent range. Forward movement. And get all the way around like so. So, for rotation, we have a joint rotation point up here. 
as well as there's a rotation point here in the elbow. It's not as easy for me to get this one to turn. You can have it turn that way if you want. I will say these joints in the arms are pretty tight, so uh, be careful moving those around. And our arm bend, pretty decent here. And the wrist here, you have a little bit of a joint right there. This is all ball joint here. And for this side of the arm, we have this that just opens up like so. And your spare beam saber is right there. Like I said, it just kind of plugs in there and just sits. Now on the other arm here, we have our machine cannon. Again, it's just kind of move the arm down and will stick out like so. All right, as you move on down the kit here, there's a lot of stuff kind of going on around the waist here. Uh, you can pull the waist joint up like so, and then you can have the bull bin back there. You can have it crouch down and like so. You have your side to side bend, like so. And inside the waist here, these side skirts are just move these out of the way. Put on these little mechanisms so you can kind of they can get them to slide out of the way here. Come on. There we go. And we can kind of see all the way in here where the leg joint is. And even without doing anything else, the leg can come all the way up like that. And while I got it here, we'll show up the uh, leg bend. Very nice leg bend. Lots of detail here that's revealed when you reveal the leg here. It's a little piston in here uh, between the gold and silver parts here. Very, very nice here. Uh, now, now for the adjustable hip here, there's a few ways. This is one of those hips that has this swing mechanism in it here. You unclip this bottom piece here. You can swing the legs down. And actually make the Gundam taller if you want. You can do that. Uh, but also, back here, this is the same deal as the real way new Gundam if you ever mess with this thing. Uh, and also this front piece has to come out like so and then the whole thing can swing forward like so so you can get some really extreme ab crunch here this kit that fell off gonna get that back on there and yeah actually with it like that you can actually boot the uh, back skirts all the way behind it <laughs> it's a little too extreme in some cases but yeah there's a lot of um there's a lot of stuff going on here, so on the back here, and this is part of the open hatch gimmick, but those will open up like so. That's what I have going on underneath here. Let me get Alright, let me put all this back together here. Because there's this there's just some crazy stuff going on here. I just wanna get it all back together here. Slide that back down, lock that back up again. So now we can look at the rest of the kit. All right, the P here. They're on this kind of rotation joint. If you want, kind of want to get some better articulation out of them, just kind of want to pull it out a little bit here. And then that way you can kind of turn the foot a lot more, like so. Move all the way back like that, move all the way forwards like that, and we got a little toe bend, toe bend right here. So. Alright, now for the open hatch gimmicks here, we got the ones on the shoulder here. These ones are pretty easy to do. Um, you have to kind of slide up this piece here, move it forward, and this piece will slide out. Like so, just like that. 
The ones on the leg are a little trickier to do. Uh, but what I found, you kind of want to move this piece up. That'll push this one out, out of the way, like that. These silver ones would kind of move up, out of the way, like so. This will move on the bottom here. Now these side ones, these ones are kind of hard to get out for me. I find it best if you can kind of get your fingernail around it and just kind of pull it straight up. Let me leave them the back here and it should start to slide out and you can kind of grab it and pull it the rest of the way out. That's like this here. And then it can open up like that or swing it the other way but uh, this is about as far out as it goes here so you have to do like all four of those went all out here but I'm only gonna do this one for the uh, video here to show you and then put all that back together here so, so that is the open hatch gimmick like I said gimmicks check mark articulation check mark looks good check mark big back skirt check mark articulation to the extreme all right I'm just gonna show the accessories here real quick we got our shield here there's a the back there it's only attached right here with a little ball joint socket here plugs into the back of the arm right here And that's it. So, with the ball joint and kind of swing it around. Again, like with a lot of shoes, I wish there was a way to attach it to the side of the arm rather than the back, but I guess that's really the only real niggle I have about the kit. But it's not that big a deal. Hyper Bazooka. And if you built the real great new gun, and this is very, very similar to that. It's not the exact same mold. I originally thought it was, but it's not. But. It functions pretty much exactly the same as that, so. Uh, right here is that little clip where it will attach to the backpack. Right here. It just kind of clips on right there. I do find it pulls the entire thing out. Often, so you have to kind of put that back in here. <clears throat> Uh, beam rifle. It's a pretty nice looking beam rifle. It's been like restyled from the master grade high new gun. Like I said, this thing seems like it's been like seedified to me. So this looks like reminds me of the. This reminds me of a Gundam seed design almost in some ways, but. But it's a pretty nice looking beam rifle. Let's plug it right into the hand. The only real issue is that the back half is probably a little bit too long for me, in my opinion, since it does kind of kind of get in the way of the upper arm sometimes. But it's not it's not that big a deal. So we can have it like that. Uh, beam sabers. They're just there's really not a whole lot to say about the beam sabers. They have nice blue blades. I already mentioned that. So you got those two your hands and action base adapter here. So like I said, with the action base, you need to have this plug here, stick this on, it goes into a slot on the back here, I'm sure it doesn't, it doesn't tip over here, I'm not gonna have it like that, and then you know, stick the backpack on, like so. And there is the real grade, I knew, Gundam. A pretty fantastic kit for the year of 2021. If you're interested, which you probably are if you're watching this video, do try and get one because this is a fantastic kit. Uh, this is easily probably, this actually may be the best real grade kit now, in my opinion. Like, originally I was like, oh, the Zeong is so good and so awesome and so underrated, and it was pretty awesome. This kit probably does top that a little bit here, in my opinion here, so. Bandai continues to just perform miracles with the real grade line, and who knows what comes next year. It's probably not going to be as 
big of a kit as this, I, I would imagine, but I don't even think the next real great kit has been announced yet, so I'm kind of curious to see what they do, so. But this, very good, very good, and very recommended if you can find one. I know, there, I know, I know, like I mentioned, this is a hot item right now, so. Uh, this kind of sells out pretty quick at a lot of hobby stores I've been kind of keeping tabs on, so. I got this thing pre-ordered like as soon as it came out, like was available back in May or whatever, and I think I was one of the first people to kind of get it from the shop I uh, bought, I, I, that I bought it from, so. But, like I said, if you can find one, get it. Uh, don't, don't buy it from a scalper, just don't, don't do that. It's not worth it, so. Anyway. Uh, this is part of my long, this is a longer review, almost 40 minutes now, so I guess I should probably wrap it up here, so. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, I hope you found this informative and entertaining in some aspect here, and I hope you enjoy Gunpla as much as I do, I know what he, I very much enjoy the building process here. And, uh, if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like, and comment any things about the kit. Or any, any questions you might have and I'll try to answer as best I can and I hope you subscribe and because I'm always doing more and try to do more gunpla content I have more stuff coming here and of course there's there's my video game stuff which you can watch or not so <laughs> anyway thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time take care <laughs>